Making Room really grew out of a very simple question, which was, if our population is growing, how is it really going to fit into our housing stock? And so we began to just ask, well, how are people actually fitting into the housing stock right now? We broke down households in a way that was very surprising for people, and we were able to display the maps that were really showed those surprising results. One of which, a third of all of our households is a single person living alone. The other fascinating story is just how many people are sharing. There are all these people living with roommates, but also all these people living in extended family arrangements. So we knew that the housing stock was not actually providing enough choice for single people in the marketplace. So how are we actually going to accommodate this population? And what should we really do about it? We should certainly keep moving towards increasing the housing stock as a whole, but we also had to start thinking about how we use space on the inside much more efficiently. Building taller and taller buildings is not always going to be the answer. The old way of thinking about providing safe, decent and affordable housing is not going to work for now or the future. The breakthrough is deconstructing the old ways of thinking and reconstructing how we can design new models to accommodate what is a growing and flourishing city. So we wanted to begin to think about more efficiently using space on the inside and really giving people more choice. And it's important because right now those populations are having to go to the informal underground housing market, which is often unsafe, almost always illegal, and puts people really at risk. So we need alternatives to that. We began by really looking at all of the regulatory constraints that were preventing alternative housing models from coming onto the market. Our housing regulations and our zoning regulations are hugely complicated and are actually stopping the evolution of housing in multiple ways, both directly and indirectly. And we really needed to boil that down for the lay audience. So the main core of the exhibition is a selection of housing models that were put together as the result of a design challenge that we had set up in 2011. And we asked the teams of architects to pick real buildings in New York and reconfigure the inside however they would like that would support the needs of these households and of these New Yorkers. They just had to pay attention to fire safety, they had to make sure that they were quality living spaces, but aside from that they could do whatever they wanted. Having the models on view really engaged people and the exhibition design reflected the core considerations that each team was taking on in terms of the housing code. People could really see very clearly laid out what was the existing condition, what changes would be possible if you made certain key changes. One of the teams was led by Ted Smith. He took the New York City townhouse and reconfigured the insides for single adults, young single adults to be able to share. And it really brings down the price for a single adult, but also allows them to have their own space and their own lease. We also had a, a team led by Deborah Gans, who looked more at the low density stock in New York, in Queens. So she really saw how many people were living in extended family arrangements, how many people were renting out their basements, renting out their attics, and wanted to see, well, how can we in a safe, legal way allow the single family home or the two family home to evolve. One of the designs is a bungalow in Queens and she added on at least seven different accessory dwelling units that could be used in a very flexible way to support the needs of, of a bigger, more dynamic, fluid, extended family. And then the micro unit uh, was clearly a draw for people. You know, you could not help but be taken by the micro unit that was actually built by Resource Furniture inside the exhibition, that really gave people a three-dimensional experience. So specifically for the exhibit, we built a 325 square foot studio apartment that really showcased that we can create spaces that work really well for single adults. Everything was very precisely done very carefully done. It met every single bit of New York City building code except for the size of the apartment that you're allowed to build. It was a marvel to viewers who couldn't understand how you could transform that room into so many uses. It wasn't only about, say, a small apartment, you know, working and being less expensive. It was really about how to take a space and make it hyper-efficient and better than just a regularly, ordinarily furnished space. You know, by making any space 
more efficient. It gets better designed, the tolerances are tighter. By making housing more efficient, you're housing more people in a higher quality of life uh, in less space. We were blown away by the response to the exhibition. It really created a buzz in the city. Literally, people were talking about it everywhere you went. It far exceeded our expectations. I mean, I think over 150,000 people visited the exhibition. And it spurred a lot of thinking about how these kinds of housing choices would be good for the environment, how they could help populations, whether it was the elderly or young people or low-wage workers. We hope that people who saw it and who continue to hear about it will think more about how to help inform government action to create more housing choices.